Thanks so much, Pam. I appreciate it. And if I could just remind everybody, if they could take a moment and um, click on the uh, on the uh, Zoom user interface and and uh, select speaker view, um, that would be great. That way, we will see our panelists and not everybody else. So. Um, it'll make it make it a little bit easier for you guys. Um, first of all, thanks so much to Robert Kohler and Allison Rand, the team over at Club OS for putting these webinars together. Um, as a quick reminder, Club OS is a trusted industry software for engagement and marketing automation. Um, when I was at MotionSoft, we worked with many uh, of our customers who had selected Club OS as their CRM prospecting, personal training, upselling tool. And the great thing about it is that you can take all of these different uh, parts of your business and put them in one place. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful tool to help increase membership sales, drive PT revenue. Um, and it's all supported by a great reporting tool set that they've got. So I um, encourage you to take a look at that product if you haven't. Um, so we're gonna jump right into this. Our, our, um, our topic today is what today's prospects are looking for in a gym how the landscape of, of marketing has changed drastically pre and post COVID. And we don't wanna make this necessarily just about COVID because I think we've all had our dose of COVID, so to speak. Uh, and uh, we wanna we want to talk about the value of these types of tools more broadly from a marketing perspective, from a sales perspective, and ultimately from a collaboration perspective. I'm joined by Tabitha Clark, Troy McFarland, and Lindsay Lemus, all uh, veterans of the health and fitness industry who've lived, um, you know, pre and post COVID lives uh, in this industry. And I'm going to take a moment and have them uh, introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their background. Um, and maybe as you're, as you're talking, you can just sort of weave in some of the challenges that you as organizations have had to overcome as we're sort of rebounding. And I'll start with you, Tabitha. Uh, you want to start us off, then we'll go to Troy uh, and uh, wrap up with Lindsay. Great. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me, everybody. Uh, it has been a challenge over the years <laughs> with, with the COVID and um, just a year and a half into this, but um, I am the VP of sales for Vita Fitness. We've got six locations uh, in the DC area, uh, actually five in DC, one, our newest baby in Virginia, which is in Boston, um, and all of our locations are open at this point in time. Um, I can tell you that over the past year uh, and eight months that I've been with the organization, I've got over 20 years of sales experience uh, and sales leadership experience myself. Um, it has been a challenge just trying to make sure that we can uh, stay close to new prospects, uh, bring in those prospects that are interested, uh, and more importantly, talk about uh, the fitness industry and how it's changed and how we've rebranded ourselves to be a safe place uh, for those members to come back to. So I'll stop there and let uh, Troy take it over. Thank you. Um, I'm Troy McFarlane. Um, I'm the director of marketing for Fitness SF. Um, we're a, a chain of gyms. We have eight gyms in the San Francisco Bay Area, six in San Francisco, one in Marin, one in Oakland. Um, I have over about 11 years of experience in the fitness industry and nine of those years being with Fitness SF. Um, so I've, you know, I've went from front desk to sales to marketing and been doing marketing for the last six years or so, seven years. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, it has been interesting to say the least. I mean, as a marketer, I feel like a, a lot of us marketers have got, have been shifted into the operational <laughs> landscape with, and technology. It's almost like it's the trifecta. It's like, you're not just doing marketing anymore. I mean, you're, you're running operations and you are dealing with the technology constantly. So, you know, I've definitely learned a lot and um, I'm happy to share that today with everyone too. Thanks, Trey. Mm -hmm. Lindsay? Um, yes, I'm Lindsay. I'm the CEO of Twist Integrations and my background is very much technical focused. Um, I've worked for a very high-end health club for many years. Um, so at Twist, we integrate club management softwares with enterprise level CRM platforms. So HubSpot and Salesforce mostly. Um, and our focus is really around membership sales, revenue tracking, marketing, um, and member experience. So a really well integrated CRM and club management system really allows you to manage all of those touch points for your members and prospects and um, 
just track all of those digital sources as well as the in-person club touch points um, all in a single location. So excited to jump in today and talk more about Funnel. Excellent. Thanks, Lindsay. So let's just jump into it. And before I do a couple of quick reminders, if, if um, you're if you're on the call and you have your video on and you're not one of our panelists or speakers, um, if we could ask you to shut your video off, we'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. And then the second piece is if you do have any questions that you have as we're going through the presentation today, please use the chat function and I'll make sure to, um, to ask uh, the panelists. And if you wouldn't mind not identifying who the panelists that you, you have the question of, that would be great. So let's get into it. So um, I think well, I want to put the COVID stuff up front early and then I want to move on. But let's talk about how prospecting has changed over the course of the past year. What are people looking for? What are prospects looking for? And, and I'll, I guess I'll start with you, Tabitha, because you've played the marketing role. You've also played a sales role at Vita. And I think that one of the constituents that is really interesting right now in terms of prospecting and upselling is the former member. Can you talk a little bit about how you're connecting with those folks, the people that went on freeze, the people that canceled and encouraging them to come back into the club? What's the message there? Yeah, so um, done some really uh, you know good things with trying to reach out, um, obviously, our CEO stays in front of everybody by making sure that he's constantly emailing all of our membership base. Uh, more importantly, segmenting out right the members who uh, were with us before COVID um, and then going into it, um, and then as well as those newer members. Um, and then we also had to make sure that we were uh, talking to the prospects as well. So, you know, one of the biggest pieces that I found uh, is that our prospects really wanted flexibility um, in their contract terms. So. Uh, really understanding uh, everything that's going on in the world, we found that prospects wanted it to be really simple. They wanted really simple pricing. They wanted the flexibility of contract terms that best fit their lifestyles because they didn't know if, you know, one week they were going to be sick or somebody that they lived with, especially in the DC area, knowing that there's a lot of roommates and things like that um, in different industries. Um, and so at Vita, we really rebranded our membership types, um, giving them a really simple way to sign up. Um, and you know, whether that's a month to month membership uh, or they want it to be an annual contract, but save a little bit of uh, money up front, um, or they were interested in our penthouse pool that was getting ready to open, uh, with the season, um, and giving them access to our sweat box studio concept, uh, all in one. So we, uh, found that we, a needed to stay in touch with our members, letting them know what the changes were that were going on. We really needed to paint the picture of what the experience was gonna be like in the gym when they first came in, because it looked totally different from pre-COVID. Uh, they needed to understand that, hey, when you come through the door, uh, you should expect to get you know, a bottle of Trisano that you know, kills 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses. You're gonna get your temperature taken. We now have a PAR code system. So really making that uh, sure that we were upfront telling them all of the different changes and then a picture of what that experience was gonna look like. Um, and that they weren't going to be uh, standing in lines next to everybody else or, you know, working out directly next to somebody, uh, and they were maintaining that six feet apart. Um, so it was a challenge for us, but I think we did a really good job. Again, uh, our owners stayed on top of getting those emails out. We were able to answer questions and really paint the picture to make everybody feel like uh, it's a very uh, nice, cohesive system uh, and that it was safe for them to get back into our gyms. Great. Troy, you guys had a different problem in that you were probably one of the last states to open up in California. And so your communication, while I'm sure you were doing on a pretty regular basis, perhaps the message was slightly different. Can you talk a little bit about that? And once you did open, was the message similar to what Tabitha just described? Yeah, um, you know, the messaging was similar. Um, we had to, yeah, we were locked down for quite a while. So we had to really pivot and get creative. So you know, at three of our locations, we basically took a parking lot across the street from our gym, which we can use, and we built an outdoor gym. We moved half the equipment outside, ran electricity, everything, and then we rented a giant canopy and a tent. So our marketing was based around, hey, we now have options for you still, because there is nothing to do in San Francisco right now, let a, you know, not just a fitness um you know, option, but in general, there was nothing to do. So, 
So it was a good way for people to get out. You could clearly see it was spaced out. We would send out videos on social and all that stuff saying, hey, we have options for you where you know, you still, you still take your temperature um, when you walk in. You can see everyone that's out there. It's very transparent. Um, we also, you know, we're, we're very tech forward. So we, we partnered with a local company called Cognis who does thermal camera. Uh, so it, they're a thermal camera. So they take your temperature when you walk in. So we didn't have to do the, you know, the, the temperature gun to the forehead and all that. So we would market that kind of stuff. That was kind of the messaging. We would say like, Hey, you walk in, it's very easy. You don't touch anything. You don't do anything. Um, it's very non-intrusive and, and, um, yeah, that was really the messaging that we had to portray. And, and just out of curiosity, how many of the members that are coming back into the club over the, since you guys opened up in June, I think, right? They opened the indoor facilities in June. How many of those, how, when was it? We were open September for five weeks and then got shut down. That's, again. Right. That's right. So when you came, when you opened up again, how many of the members that were coming into the club um, were former members as opposed to new members? New joints. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah. So the people that came into the facility or who are now coming into the facility and rejoining, are they new members, like bodies you've never seen before, or are they people that canceled their memberships during COVID now coming back? No, we're getting a lot of new members. Um, you know, fortunately, I, I feel like we're pretty lucky. Um, you know, unfortunately for some of these other competitors, they've permanently closed because it was just too difficult for them to survive in San Francisco under the conditions that they put us under. So, you know, we're getting all that, you know, all that cleanup right there. So they're all coming to our gyms because either their gym shut down or, uh, you know, that's so we're, we're actually pretty lucky in that sense. Got it. And Lindsay, you work with clubs of all sizes. You work with HVLP clubs, you work with higher, higher end clubs, and you've, you've had experience as an operator in high end clubs. What's the right cadence of messaging to members. We all know sort of the adage of the sleeping dog in this industry. I don't want to get into a philosophical discussion about that right now. Everyone's got their opinions, but is there some sort of a drip cadence that you suggest that your clients engage in to get some of those folks who were former members back into the club or even getting, getting, getting new folks to come in? Yeah, I think it really depends on like life cycle stage and where they're at in the process. I mean, I think it's completely different talking to a member that's, you know, been frozen to unfreeze them. I think there's goals for every single act and figuring out where they're at in their life cycle stage. You know, have they not been to the club in five months is a different conversation than, you know, I was in two weeks ago, but haven't come in or something like that. So I think just figuring out and tracking that um, digitally, and then also applying automation to, you know, re-engage and tracking all those touch points in a single location. So when was the last time that they opened that marketing email or that sales email um, and just really keeping a really good hold on touch points on every contact. And that includes in club and also the digital touch points. So when do they check in last? When do they open an email last? Yeah. And so just staying on that, on that topic, and I'm going to come back to Tabitha and Troy on it as well, but you know, as you know, when you were when you were working at ACAC for many years, obviously this sort of the tools that were available back then are very different than what's available now with drip campaigns, SEO, SCM, all of the digital touch points which you just mentioned. But in your view, how has uh, sort of technology reshaped the way that clubs are prospecting today? Um, you know, I, I expect that for everyone who's on the club or on the call rather it is the single biggest source of lead generation. Whereas if you were to go back 10, 15 years ago, it may be health fairs and member referrals and those types of things. But how have you, I mean, your customers, Lindsay, in the different segments leverage technology? Maybe talk about that. And then I do wanna ask that same question of both Troy and Tabitha. Yeah, so the... I feel like pre-pandemic, I definitely harped on this. I was like, we need to be tracking digital leads. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's even more important now. I'd say probably 90 to 95% of the member journey starts online now. I mean, it is very rare for someone not to look through your website, to look at COVID protocols, to research reviews. So clubs really have to prioritize 
their data strategy and create that end-to-end -end experience that is really seamless to track all of those digital interactions outside of your club management software. So your CMS is really awesome at tracking, you know, like class bookings and payments and, you know, all of your member statuses, but, you know, it's not quite as great at like all the marketing tooling and then all the sales tooling and tracking. So just figuring out how to integrate those systems and prioritize touch points so that you get a count of every counts of touch points on every contact record um, and figuring out all of those digital interactions just are just really important, especially to support your membership team to give them context to you know, what they're interested in, um, how to respond and track life cycle stages, lead status, and also opportunity and deal stages. Got it. Tabitha, how have you guys leveraged technology at Vita? Yeah, so um, our biggest uh, challenge was being overworked in the club and not focusing on where we were spending our marketing dollars. Um, and so I identified that gap uh, and developed a call center. So uh, we actually now have a full-fledged call center that reaches out to every lead that comes into our system within five minutes, which is a really good way to, uh, A, make sure that they end up at the right club, uh, number one. So we're driving leads to the appropriate location. Uh, B, it also, I mean, our call center has over a 35% conversion rate. So uh, every time that a lead comes into our system within five minutes, one of our uh, sales appointment executives are reaching out to that individual to talk a little bit about their interests, uh, the lead form that they came in, they're going to reference that as well, uh, which helps us kind of tie it into, okay, we spent money here, our marketing dollars are working here, we've got X number of uh, leads or folks that responded, and this was the percentage that actually answered the telephone in five uh five minutes. And then from there, you know, how long did it take us to reach the rest of those? Uh, and did it convert well, or was it a bad campaign? And where should we throw our dollars from there? Um, the sales appointment executive's role is strictly to set that appointment for our membership team. Uh, so while our membership team or membership advisors are in the club uh, running around working with walk-ins or working their daily tasks and call campaigns, we've got a call center that's smiling and dialing different campaigns that I put together, uh, as well as calling all of those new leads into the system. That's been our huge win. Um, I can tell you that right after the pandemic, when we got back in there, we were seeing clubs that were uh, going in over at 100% of their goal. Um, and that was, again, some of our previous members that did come back to us. But a lot of it was uh, members that were looking for um, a gym that was all inclusive um, and something that offered them flexibility. Um, and in addition to that, they were you know, ready to leave their other gym. And this was an opportunity for them to do it. So uh, we've had some really good success with that. That's great. Troy, I'm going to switch the question up a little bit here and talk about sort of alternative methods of, of marketing um, in this day and age. And so one of those areas is influencers on social media. Have you guys done anything uh, to leverage that? I mean, you guys obviously are in a very high tech town. You've done a lot of work, I know, with um, you know building sort of this community concept using technology. Um, what have you done uh, on that front? Well, social media, obviously, a lot of things is, have changed. You know, TikTok coming into play and and all this stuff. So it's like we've had to really shift our focus. And you know, we, we're down a person um, from before we started. So we only have about three people on our marketing team now. Mm -hmm. So we've had to reshift the, the calendar and, and how we do things. Um, but we, we haven't dove into the, the influencer side of things just yet as much as we could have or could be. Um, but to go back kind of to your original question, we've done something pretty drastic with the technology we, we've done we, we use Salesforce and we started custom development quite a while ago three mm -hmm. four years ago and we we took the member referral the the older way maybe we used to do you know drive prospects in and we've now integrated that together so now the very first messaging you get as a new member or you get when you come in um, from our sales team is if you refer a friend you get a free month. If you send, so we gave every member a referral link 
just like an Uber Eats or a DoorDash. So when you sign up, you get your custom URL, you share that, it almost cuts out the prospecting completely because then, mm -hmm. then the member is still doing their word of mouth, but then you can see directly, boom, someone signed up online with their link, we give them a free month. And I, I don't know any other gyms that are doing that and putting that big of a carrot on the stick. So we've just basically turned, we've reshaped ourselves by turning every member into a salesperson. And, and we continue to, to give our sales teams the commission and, and the credits for that so that there's no butting heads between sales and marketing because that's, you know how that can go. Sure. And so we've, that's kind of how we've reshaped that. And um, yeah. That's great idea. That's awesome. Lindsay, any thoughts on this? Social media is obviously a big part of what um, clubs are doing these days in terms of uh, Google AdWords, uh, Facebook ads, et cetera. How about being able to leverage influencers out there? Have you guys, have any of your clients doing anything with that? Not quite as much as influencers. They have done some like kind of influencer like discounts, which has been kind of interesting for clubs. So they'll say, hey, we'll give you half off your yearly membership. And then there's kind of like criteria for that person to post. So you need to post 10 posts on Instagram that are natural and feel like you took them, you know, and you're talking about your kids, the kids program or exercise or that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of an interesting way to not spend advertising or a lot of money and also just provide a discount to them. Um, and what we found from people doing that is they usually end up posting more kind of if they're in the habit of, you know, oh, I need to post 10 times. They usually post stories and other things, but you can kind of make a criteria for them to, you know, follow and sign to provide that discount. Um, but yeah, that's worked really well. Um, I think also just varying touch points on leads. So, you know, incorporating different technologies. So doing text message, doing phone calls as Tabitha, Tabitha had mentioned and awesome that you guys call in five minutes. I feel like I always tell clubs like you need to follow up quickly and it's, it's hard to, you know, have that follow up, um, you know, email, all of those things. And also um, direct mail, customized direct mail through CRM is really cool. I found that, um, people are kind of like surprised and delighted by a touch point that's really highly custom. So you can use contact properties in the CRM on like different postcards. So I could get a postcard in the mail if I, you know, signed up for a trial at a, at a health club and it would say like, hey, Lindsay, thanks for your interest in, you know, the Charlotte club. And then there could be, you know, custom information on the back that's um, from the contact record. So just varying those touch points so that, you know, you're, you're getting the count of touch points, but it's not just all email or all phone call. Um, and then also, this seems like a really simple piece of advice, but just having on your forms, just preferred method of contact, like check all that apply. So SMS, phone call, email, you know, what have you, and then just contact them in the way they want to be contacted. I've seen clubs do that and just had a lot better um, just response, just one, you took the time to ask. And then um, people always seem appreciative of, oh, I checked email and you sent me an email and that was really helpful because I'm a busy mom, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, all those um, definitely are impactful. Got it. Troy, did you have something to add? Um, I thought you raised your hand. You're good. Oh, no, no. Got it. Okay. Um, so, let, so you brought up the funnel, Lindsay. So let's talk about the funnel. I mean, obviously, you know, we live in this world where we live and die by, by the closeout of the month. And it feels to me, looking at gyms, including my own, that, you know, a bunch of leads come in during the month. Mm -hmm. We call the ones that we really, really like, or we call everyone. I don't think we call everyone. We call everybody. <laughs> we like we call. <laughs> yeah, we, we call everybody um, and, or email them. And then they sort of disappear into the ether, the ones that don't sign. So Tabitha, I'll go to you. You've got this call center. Are you, yeah. how, how many times, if a person doesn't join, how many times are you calling before you push them into the automation uh, part? Uh, so they will be worked uh, for 45 days. Um, so we have a real aggressive approach to um, that. So we're calling all leads within five minutes. And then uh, day one, two, three, four, and five, they're going to receive a phone call from probably two people, uh, one being the call center. And then on the normal rotation with the membership advisor, they will call later in the afternoon because our call center folks are either working morning or uh, a late evening shift. 
Um, and then from there, we uh, obviously have uh, text drivers that go into the automation piece for our members. Um, but we are definitely calling as much as possible. So our preferred method of uh, reaching out is obviously the call center within five minutes um, and then calling those uh, day one, two, three, four, and five. They'll get a break for two days and then we're back on it at day seven. Uh, and then we go into day 15, 30, 60, uh, and so on from there. So roughly 45 uh, days. Um, and then we may go as far as 60, just depending on what that actual initial conversation was. Maybe the call center reached them, they set an appointment, they didn't show for the appointment, and now we've got to follow up. Um, the biggest piece is that we've kind of got call campaigns running in the background as well. So the call center every single Sunday receives uh, specific calls that they're reaching out for every single club. Um, and that changes throughout the month based on the week. So week one would be, for example, the last 90 days of inquiries that came into our system. Um, and they're gonna call those for that week so that all six of the call center individuals right now uh, we'll call all of those. Uh, and then in week two, we're going to look and focus on all of the month to date leads. Um, and then we may throw in some tours and trials. So there's a constant call campaign that the call center is working outside of the new leads they have to hit within five minutes. And then in addition to that, the membership team is still calling their daily rotation of leads that are uh, within that funnel. And they can see each other's notes. So they know, hey, the call center just called an hour ago. I'm probably going to call this later in the afternoon. So mm -hmm. we this continuous cycle of always reaching out. Um, and the really cool thing is that we've not had a lot of complaints or barely any, I can maybe count maybe one or two, uh, that we've you know been in contact with them too much. Um, one of the biggest things for us after COVID is that all of these businesses took a pause for six months and every single business is emailing right now. And so for just another email that's getting lost in their box. So I really had to train the teams and the call center that our first point of contact is to build a relationship by phone. So pick up the phone. If they're busy, then it's next text. And then it's an email. Um, and then from there, we're going to follow up the exact same way. So to be clear, in that 45 to 60 day period, there are a minimum of six touch points. Is that right? Uh, it'll be a lot more than that because you'll have uh, six times maybe three individuals because you've got all folks working in the background. That's a lot. That's awesome. Excellent. Um, and then Troy, can you talk a little bit about the top of the funnel versus the bottom? So this concept of the qualified lead, right? You got sort of raw leads coming at the top and then you got deals, sales coming out of the bottom. How many are, how many uh, qualified leads or maybe even raw leads? I don't know if you have the numbers, but how many do you need to get at the top of the funnel to get one deal out of the bottom? Well, We've been, to be honest, we've been we've been really trying to get our data right for quite a while. So we're just now getting to the point where we have really clear visibility in Salesforce with our dashboards mm -hmm. on you know who we're driving in through the website. Then so that's that's the top of the funnel, you know, driving them through the form into the website, uh, through the website. And then the next would be getting them to then fill out the walk-in kiosk. So getting them to come in, schedule the tour. And then they either, I mean, we have a pretty good closing percentage rate. Um, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I mean, when the, once they come in, if we can get them in, they, they're closing them because we have a very simple model. We don't have a ton of different membership options. It's really just one price and you get all gym access, that's it. So um, there's that, but then, then we're seeing a lot of people when they do leave, they're finding out about the buddy referral and then joining online. So, so we're just now getting into the, to the point where we can start to see these buddy referral numbers build. So we're kind of in the midst of that right now. Um, but um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, Lindsay, you managed obviously ACAC's marketing programs for, for some time. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you're managing <clears throat> marketing for uh, clubs of all different sort of shapes and sizes now. But you know, what is what is the ideal ratio in terms of qualified leads coming in through the top and sales coming in out of the bottom? Any any thoughts on that? Yeah, one thing I wanted to add to Tabitha's um, comment, mm -hmm. which was really great, was it usually takes the number is eight to nine touch points to re-engage a lead 
from when they first reach out. So they reach out on a form on the website. It takes eight to nine touch points to re-engage that lead enough to get them to book a tour or something like that. So that's a good um, number just to make sure you're hitting touch point numbers on new incoming leads. Um, I'm sorry, I just wanna ask a question on that. So eight to nine, whether it's emails, SMS texts or phone calls. Yep, so all touch points and you know, it really depends on the club what you can do. So some some a club that's high volume, low price, we're going to automate most of those, but we want to kind of diversify. Um, but yeah, depending like Tabitha with the call center, I think that's awesome. Like to get that person on the phone. Um, but yeah, eight to nine is the 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 data the stat that goes with reengaging a new lead that's just come in and the getting with them in five minutes also increases your chances and kind of shortens that eight to nine, but eight to nine is a little bit more typical for what we see. Sure. Um, so back to the, I guess, more of the funnel question. Yeah. Um, so I guess at a high level, this might be helpful for some people. So we have kind of funnel or life cycle stages, and those are um, typically in a CRM, like subscriber lead, marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead opportunity, customer, and then evangelist. So an evangelist would be like a nine or 10 NPS and has been at a club a certain amount of time. Um, and then from the life cycle stages, which those are pretty fixed, um, you have lead status. So we've talked about that a little bit today. So, you know, new, open, in progress, um, maybe the call centers reached out, um, an open deal. So that's a, an opportunity that's open. Um, and then you have your closed lost um, lead statuses. So um, unqualified, bad timing, too expensive, you know, all of those would be, can, you know, fall under lead status. Um, and then separate from that, you have deal pipeline and opportunity stages. So this could be that appointment or tour it is booked um, by the call center. Um, that person is qualified to buy, pricing sent, follow up, and then either close one or close loss. So we go through, you know, life cycle stage and then under life cycle stage, under opportunity, you have all these pipeline, and then you also have lead statuses outside of that. Um, and, you know, as the leads go through, if you have really detailed life cycle stages, that, and also lead stages and deal stages, that's where you can apply automation to all of these. So if someone's a marketing qualified lead, but then, you know, fills out a form and then, you know, wants to request sales, we want to pull them out of an automated nurture sequence and then put them into you know, a different sequence and then what's the automated and then what's the manual things we want to do for follow-up. So we want the call center to reach out. And then we also want to, you know, start to send them an email um, to get them in the club for a trial or something like that. So hopefully that's a good, like high level overview of funnel plus like plus lead status, and then also managing pipeline um, and making that really clean so that you can get a lot of predictive revenue um, and, and a lot of other things outside of that. No, that's very helpful. And so just to follow on to that, and we're going to sort of pivot over to non-dues revenue sales. We've talked about prospecting and new membership. Let's talk about PT a little bit. How would you modify those stages for upsells to existing members? Let's call it, you know, personal training. Some people might be charging for group exercise. Yep. That sort of thing. Yeah. So once they're a customer, then they kind of go into separate, like I would probably create another field that's outside of lead status and then opportunity that would do, you know, all the PT stuff or the swim lessons or everything that's in the club and then do the same thing, assign that nurture automated workflow. What do we want that's automated? And then what do we want that someone at the club's going to reach out? And then, you know, figuring out, you know, what can our club handle like we don't want more tasks than they can handle so a lot of it we just need to pull up and automate that's usually better you're going to get more touch points on those leads um, so yeah just making a completely different flow for customers for all of those different crossing up cells and and also triggering off of you know are they actually interested in that or do they have a family membership do they have um you know have they visited the swim lesson page on our website um you know not just drip, but also doing kind of those trigger um, based on, you know, cookie tracking and that sort of thing. Got it. And Tabitha, you and Troy, both your organizations do a pretty good personal training business um, in terms of upselling those services to members. Um, how do you, how are you communicating to them? Are you sort of following the, uh, the recipe that Lindsay just gave out? Are you leveraging the call center that you've built out? 
Um, what are you doing to, to upsell personal training? And by the way, I think membership is back uh, or at least coming back to an industry numbers right now are around 70% of pre-COVID numbers in terms of membership sales and sort of re-engagement with existing members. Personal training is still down. Um, and there's a lot of different reasons for that that are both socioeconomic, et cetera, not to mention personal training is a very sort of, you know, um, uh, close one-on-one -on -one proximity type thing. But um, that, that aside, again, we don't want to focus just on COVID. What, do you, what did you guys do and what are you doing now uh, as it relates to upselling personal training? I'm going to come to you after Tabitha, uh, Troy. Tabitha, you first. Sure, yeah, so we are following some of the things that Lindsay uh, mentioned as well. Um, I can tell you that for personal training uh, for us, they actually uh, were doing better than the sales side um, during COVID and are continuing to uh, grow at this point uh, for our, our different clubs. Uh, so every new member that comes in, our sales teams are trained to uh, obviously get them uh, opted into what we call a Vita fit so that they are getting in front of a personal trainer. Um, and then they're going through that assessment um, and then talking about their own fitness goals, um, as well as getting their interests and their goals and why uh, it's important to them up front and getting that over, communicating that to our personal training team so that um, they can have a more detailed conversation when that sale does come in. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, obviously they are making the sales on the back end. Um, so for us, it's really about the left hand speaking with the right hand um, and communicating over to that team exactly what somebody's interests are and then following them through that set, that sales cycle. Um, and we automated some text drivers as well uh, is what we call them because it drives them back into the club. So, you know, when they're a new member uh, of the first day that they're a member, they're getting a congratulations text from us um, at day 15, they may get some guest passes. Um, and they need to, it drives them into membership because they actually have to go see their membership consultant to get those guest passes. Um, and then again, at day 30, we drive them back in, they get 25% off a smoothie, uh, at day 60, they're coming back into the club uh, and they get some other texts that tell them to opt into their new member, uh, resources and benefits. Uh, so we've got that all running in the background. Um, but for personal training, you know, our sales teams do a, do a really good job of setting the appointment up front at the table at point of sale. That's been the biggest piece is you've got to get the business right when they're there in the chair and you've got to slow down the sales cycle uh, and have that conversation and explain to them uh, and tie it back to their goals on why meeting with personal training is so important. If you do those things, you'll get the appointment and they'll leave uh, knowing that they're coming back in a couple of days to meet with that personal trainer. And that feeds that group for us. Got it. That's really helpful. Troy, what are you guys doing on that front? Yeah, uh, to mimic, mimic Tabitha, Tabitha a bit, I mean, we, uh, we're we doing some of the same things, but we, I mean, we really almost only use email. We don't use SMS. Um, is there, is it, just to, sorry to interrupt, was there, is that a calculated choice not to use it? Is it too personal a communication method? Why did you decide not to use it? Well, well, looking future, we're actually starting to, you know, really dive into the conversational AI stuff. So, so it's been taking us a long time to get our data right. And so we're just, we're a bit nervous to start automating some of those things at the moment. So that's why we've, we've taken our time to really set this up right. And, um, but, you know, we're looking at companies like Health Desk or uh, Conversica, so we're going to try that out and, and then we'll start using SMS because then people will say, yes, I'm going to opt in. And then the AI will start chatting with them, but we don't, we don't do that now. Um, but we, we just recently got a regional fitness director, um, which we've never had before in our eight clubs. So it was really just the directors or the managers at each club managing their own gyms. And then, you know, us managing it from an operational standpoint, but we now have someone in that position and that that helped us tremendously um, because now we have some real clear insights to what they're doing. And we actually didn't have fitness managers for a while either due to COVID. And so now now um, now we're we're having to rebuild, but but we are booking a lot in-house. We are booking, we are, we have changed our messaging a lot to say like, hey, get your 55 minute you get your 50 minute fitness checkup, like come in and do the in body. Um, so we have, we have our, you know, our new member onboarding that's really focused on the email campaigns that are really focused on the buddy referral and the come do your fitness checkup. Like we all need to know where we're starting. 
So, so that's kind of what we're doing now. And then now we have the fitness managers back in the clubs and they're, they're basically emailing all new members and offering them comp sessions. And, you know, that, that's kind of our, our method right now. So yeah, go ahead, Tabitha. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on what Troy said about Conversica. So we actually, that's been a lifesaver for us. Um, when it comes to freezes and things like that, we were able to throw that into Conversica and our AI had reached out by email. Um, and then that automatically would send an automatic text to my phone. So if somebody responded, I could read the text, I could click into their file really quickly. Uh, and then I could assign it to somebody in membership to work or I could reach out myself. Uh, but Conversica has been great for re-engaging those folks who we can go in and segment and say, okay, you uh, left the gym uh, back in March 16th of you know, last year due to COVID and take that entire list, upload it in Conversica, and she's working in the background while we now have a call center working and membership. So um, it's a really good tool to look into. Uh, Conversica has been great for us. Thanks for that. Um, it wouldn't be a fitness webinar if we didn't talk about retention for a moment. Um, and you, and I think, and, and I think AI is a good segue to it because it's a scary thing, right? You're, when you, when you talk about automation and I'll ask you this, Lindsay, when you talk about automation and AI, uh, and identifying who the members are, who are likely to quit, mm -hmm. they're going to look at some basic data. They're going to look at usage. They're going to look at spend. And well, we've got a bunch of members who pay us, but never show up. How do we deal with that? And how do you leverage automation in a, in a way that doesn't upend your business? Yeah, that's a good question. I also like Conversica and it is integrated with HubSpot, which is awesome. So you can automate those lists and it like pushes it in and it, it eliminates some of that upload, the export upload, export. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it tracks everything, but sleeping members, I feel like we're past that point, like with COVID, like everyone that was going to leave has left and like, we're starting afresh. Right. So, um, you know, I think a lot of clubs the last year had people fall off. Um, you know, one thing I would encourage clubs to like move forward with is to not be like scared of data decay. Like your database is going to decay by historically 23% per year. And that's just like how it is. And, you know, either we want to be driving leads down the funnel or we want to move them to suppression and like, that's okay. Like getting to the point at clubs where like, that's okay. And then just focusing now on list growth. What can we do? You know, how can we keep the member for longer um, and engage them through all these great technology tools, Conversica, text message, direct mail, like how can we engage and like them and um, offer just just new innovations um, for workouts outside, like Troy said, and indoor workouts. And can we provide them, you know, some digital opportunities to stream from home when they're busy? Um, I think just kind of reinventing ourselves and moving forward with um, just a change in perspective on our our data. Because I think we're we're moving past a lot of the sleeping members, um, you know, heading heading into you know later this year. Yeah, inev inevitably, every one of those people um, received some communication for us from us during COVID, right? During the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if they didn't, they're most certainly gone at this point. To your, to yes. your <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So th this, you know, this is the, the in the software world where I came from for for many years, or at least in the last five years, there was this concept of customer success, um, and it was. Uh, sort of a, 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 an effort by software providers to make sure that customers were using as many of the features and, and sets of, of functionality that the, software, uh, that the software offered. And of course, the more you used, the more dependent you became. I'd just like to get your perspective, and I know this isn't a, this isn't a question we talked about, so I'm sort of doing this ad hoc, and I'd like to get each of your perspectives, we've got about 10 minutes left. You know, what, what are your thoughts with regard to how to leverage technology in a way? I mean, we talked a little bit about the AI tools and Conversica and Club OS has outbound SMS texting and outbound emails and triggers and all those types of things. But I'd love to get your perspectives on whether or not member success 
is something that as an industry we should be focusing on, and maybe you are to some extent. Um, I have heard of a couple of very, very high-end single standalone facilities who actually now have people whose sole focus is to make sure the members are happy, not to sell them anything, but to make sure they're happy, tell them about things, because of, you know many of our gyms, of course, you it's sort of a it's all in their model, right? You pay a fee with the exception of personal training, you get to use everything else. But how do you engage members, Troy, I'll start with you. How do you engage members who you know, are coming in and using the cardio machine every single day to learn more about all of the things that Fitness SF offers? Well, I think it, you know, customer service is obviously the new marketing and has been for a while. And that's why conversational AI, I mean, people just want to chat quick, get quick answers, and they don't want to be sold something. They just want to find out what they want to find out. And um, I think a, I think one way to communicate and engage with the members is, you know, really find good partners. Because I think for a long time, we thought we could be the experts in everything. And now we just, we want to be the, we want to be the channel or the place you go to when you think of overall fitness and well-being, so we've got, you know, we've got a partner, Eat Love, who is the nutrition expert. They, you know, it, it is quick, easy, convenient meal planning and tracking, uh, tracking your your calories and all that kind of stuff. And that's a thousand over a thousand dietitians and nutritionists at your fingertips. So it's not just, you know, I could be on the cardio machine every day, but when I get home, I could be using fitness SF's app to track my food. And um, so I think the partners is, is huge um, because we just need to meet people where they are and show them that. And I, you know, I think not to just mention COVID again, COVID again, but I mean, it's really shown people that it's more than just working out and you can get some instant gratification daily by, Oh, I, I that helped me find my meal today, or that helped me, um, relieve some stress today or, or whatever it is. Um, so I think that's, that's one way. And then, yeah, the, the conversational AI is huge because I feel like as soon as someone pops into the app or pops onto the site, you're like, Hey, how can I help you? Like, what, what can we help you find? And, and we all know that in sales that you, you ask questions so you can understand what people are looking for and what they want. Um, and, and also providing value. Right. So it's like, now for a hundred dollars a month, you're not just getting a gym. You're getting, you're getting all this other stuff. You're getting access to these dietitians and nutritionists and this platform and, and this Les Mills digital content that, you know, we not, we might not be the experts in digital content creation, you know, workouts, but, but we're partnered with the people that are experts. So that's, that's yeah. kind of, Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's almost like the, what American Express used to say, right? Membership has its privileges. And you know, that's what I think gyms bring. There's so much that's inside the four walls of our gyms. And, and now even outside, to your point, Troy, outside the four walls of the gyms that people can take advantage of. I love that the Eat Love Nutrition Program. That was something that you guys turned us on to. And it works even in HVLP low price uh, facility. Uh, to have the same, same question to you real quick on this concept of customer success, member success. Have you uh, dedicated any human resources? And by the way, it seems like one of the things that's coming out of this is quick, be quick about the response. Uh, don't be afraid to send, you know, more than five, six, seven responses. I mean, this is what, what you guys are, 18, 18 touches in a, in a 60 day period. I think Lindsay said eight to nine is the, is the average before someone acts. Um, but those are two of the themes that I hear coming out of here. And obviously automation is a big part of that. But when it comes to member success and customer success, what are you guys doing at Vita? Yeah, so we uh, use Medallia um, and it's a survey-based system that really gives us some good intel on the member's experience within the gym. Um, so that's very helpful. We have always branded ourselves as the one-stop shop. So we've got the spa, we've got the gym, uh, we've got registered dietitians, we've got personal training, we've got a hair salon. We know that if somebody comes into our gym and they're coming at least nine times per month, that we're going to retain that member longer than any of our other members. Um, and so our biggest opportunity and sole focus 
uh, as we get into the next several months, I just got off a call about some integrations and maybe switching our CRM tool is really for the sole purpose of connecting the dots with those members. Because uh, from COVID, you learned that it's not just the physical health, it's the well-being and the mental health. Uh, and we have all of that at our facility. So now how do I take that new member who comes in and get them to opt into their benefits very quickly? Um, and uh, how do I get them to be involved in all things related to Vita? So we know you get your hair cut. Now you can come to the gym, you can get your hair cut. You can also go to the spa uh, and you can get a workout and then leave. So, you know, our biggest opportunity is connecting those dots. Um, and system wise, we've got to do an upgrade in order to get it there. Um, from a call center perspective, we're actually tearing down part of our corporate office to uh, open up space for 10 more call center folks. We realize this works um, and it's not going away. You've got to get in front of your customers the quickest way possible. In five minutes, if you can reach them, it's 80% chance you're going to get an appointment set. Um, I can't tell you how many uh, appointments we filtered into our sales teams when we thought the months were going to be slow. And it, we were completely shocked that we outperformed uh, even our, our goal over last year um, in some of our clubs. And so uh, we know that the call center is kind of that way. Um, and at some point, we'll get to it where now part of that call center is not only calling the leads within five minutes that funnel in, but they're also reaching out to new members to say, hey, Tabitha, did you have the opportunity to opt into your new member benefits? You can do so on our website. You can click here. You can click on these links. How about I go ahead and get you scheduled for your you know, uh, value-added product that you purchase? I'd love to go ahead and get you scheduled for the spa. I can also make you an So that's where we are going in our industry. Um, but I can tell you that human touch, uh, it was lost. And now it, it's, it's rebound. We've got a call phone and we've got a text. Uh, the days of emails, um, they're just stacking up. There's thousands of them and every other company is doing the same thing. They're sending you 10% off here. They're sending you a coupon for this by email. It's all getting lost. We can't possibly read it all. So that's our focus as we move into 2022. I would be remiss not to mention that you've got the spa, you've got the pool, you've got the personal training, the cardio and the weights. You also have the beer, Cap City Brewing <laughs> Company. Right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. You got <laughs> just your dietitians, personal training. Uh, we've got everything but a hotel room at this point. <laughs> right. That's right. Excellent. Um, Lindsay, any uh, any closing thoughts? Yeah, I think kind of piggybacking off Tabitha, like I think just I think it is worth investing in someone to do member success. And I think having someone that can be a flex person, maybe to, you know, if you're a smaller club, having someone to handle those incoming leads send an email, send a text, call really quickly. And then also on the retention side, I think that is a value add for the organization just to track NPS, you know, responding, you know, to those people that maybe are passive. Can we push them up to promoters, you know, detractors? Can we call and follow up and see what went wrong? Um, you can also automate a lot of that. But as far as member success, I think you can't go wrong, especially with um, kind of post COVID. I think that's so important. Um, and I, the last thing I'll say as far as technology, um, figure out what technology creates a value add for your customers that are coming. So, you know, sometimes a CRM platform or this add-on or that add-on, we really have to kind of go all the way back and figure out what's our customer experience. Um, you know, how do we want to be interacting with our members? What do we want to be tracking? What KPIs do we want to, you know, be on top of? and then figuring out what technology is going to support that. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. I want to thank Lindsay and Tabitha and Troy for all the insight that they provided us today. Thanks to the team from Club OS uh, for putting this together. It's very, it's very informative. To, and I think it's really important uh, as an industry that we share some of the secrets because this is the way I think we come out of this uh, sort of unified. Um, a couple of uh, points before people drop off. Um, the team from Club OS is going to be sending you out more information with a worksheet, um, you can call, you can go to club-os.com to schedule a demo and see some of the automation and the features that the Club OS system can provide. Um, and of course, uh, feel free to join our Facebook page, which is Club OS Marketing. Uh, it's a Facebook group rather, um, and uh, we can continue the conversation there. Um, you will be receiving tips to help uh, convert more members in the gym. That's the worksheet that I mentioned. And finally, 
Uh, don't forget to sign up later this week for webinar number two, which is a month from now, Upselling Your Club's Add-on Services. That's on Monday, September 20th at 2 p.m. And the website for the demo is www.club-os.com. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time. Thanks to the team at Club Industry for putting this together. And we'll see you in about a month. Thanks, Thanks for having everyone. me. Thanks, everyone.